Hello? It's happening. Three attacks so far. Do you have a gun? I'm Sydney Prescott, of course I have a gun. Hello and welcome to a bonus episode of Wheel of Horror, the podcast where two best friends normally spin a wheel every week and it normally chooses the horror movie, but today we're choosing our own movie, which is Scream 2022, or as I like to call it, Scream 5, which was directed by Matt Bettinelli Olpin and Tyler Gillett. I'm your co-host, Alec, and with me today <laughs> is uh, is going to be Joe Testa, who's going to be wrapping out the series with us. If you haven't had a chance yet, we did a review on Scream 1 a while ago, a few months ago, and then we did Scream 2, 3, and 4 this week, so if you want to listen to those reviews, go ahead for it. Otherwise, Joe and I are going to be tackling Scream 5, which was released on Friday. So, Joe, what'd you think? <laughs> this is crazy we haven't even talked about it you know we're just jumping right in i have no idea what you think of this movie me neither, um, yeah. <laughs> but i'm just gonna say i had a great time with it yeah man yeah me too i definitely um there was a lot of moments i had me smiling definitely like reinvigorated you know the, the series for me but definitely enjoyed it it was sad seeing seeing dewey die though that was really gut-wrenching yeah, absolutely. That was a, a really effective scene. But, you know, I mentioned in the last episode how I thought they did a good job not overdoing it with the trailers and TV spots. That mm -hmm. being said, I feel like if there's one thing I knew about this movie going in, if there's one thing I could bet on, it's that Dewey wasn't getting out of this alive. Really? You you thought that from, uh, from just the trailers before going in? Yeah, and it's not even... The trailers, although there is one little moment in the trailer that I thought maybe they should have held back on. And it's just like a, a split second where you see Gail like screaming. Mm. And, you know, Gail is not a very emotional character. So there's only one thing that could have gotten that reaction out of her, I felt like. Mm. But even besides that, I just felt like all of our main characters weren't going to weren't going to survive this. It just wasn't going to happen in a part five. And I just thought that Dewey was the logical one. I mean, he's almost bitten it quite a few times. Yeah. <laughs> Even this time seeing him get stabbed, I'm like, eh, he's, he's, he's had worse. <laughs> like, you know. yeah, yeah, it's true. I, th I thought for, you know, they, they did a good job of teasing it and kind of dragging it out a little bit longer. But then, yeah, I, I was like, yep, it's, yeah. it's your time, Dewey. I know it's it's so sad just like you know it, it is like seeing like a friend die kind of it's been five movies of 26 years or whatever with the same people and boom finally oh absolutely I was feeling a little emotional I'm not gonna lie yeah. and, and you know right before that he had a really nice scene with with Gail and yeah like you said these characters have so much history but when he was on the phone with Sydney. And he said, you know, whatever you do, don't come to Woodsboro. And she says, you know, you don't, you don't have to worry about that. Mm. I knew it was going to be his death that gets her to Woodsboro. Oh, yeah. I mean, that is that is actually, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's an, a way for you to kind of allude to that. Coming out of watching all of these again, this one to me felt like the darkest of any of them, just even from the kills. Like that, they just felt way more grittier, like just the repeat stabs, the way that people were getting just, yeah, I guess like mutilated. I don't know. What what did you think did, for like the tone of the series, the darkness, I guess, of this one? Yeah. And I got that impression from the trailer. Mm. And I, I think you're right on. Yeah. I think this, this movie does have a little more bite than maybe people are expecting. That being said, I still think it feels like a scream movie. You know, it doesn't feel like a, a radical shift in tone. You know, if you're a fan of the previous movies, I think you're you're going to be you're going to feel right at home, but pleasantly surprised with a lot of things, too. Yeah. You know, it is funny now watching them in order again. The murders and scream have always been pretty realistic. You know, they're not like Freddy or Jason or Michael Myers, where it's just like crazy stuff. Bodies getting right. split in half or thrown into wood chipper, like, you know, just insane stuff. These are always just a knife and usually just a stab for the most part. And that did stay to this one. But God, one somebody, I think it was the football player guy, him just getting stabbed repeatedly on the ground felt so like real. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like that's even more effective. Yeah. You know, as opposed to getting some kind of over the top Tom Savini special effect, which, you know, is an effect, you know, sometimes just the subtle 
knife to the gut is even worse. Yeah, it's just like real, you know, it just feels <laughs> something you wouldn't want. You know, why don't, why don't we kind of start from the beginning and work our way through it? The beginning opening, we've, you know, we, we've kind of touched upon all of them individually, but how did you feel this one was compared to the other ones? Mm -hmm. I tried to keep my expectations in check. You know, I've I've talked about how much I admire that original scene with Drew Barrymore, you know, one of the the all time great horror movie sequences as far as I'm concerned. So I try not to go in saying to myself they need to top that, you know, because right. that just it just isn't fair. That being said, I thought it was a really effective intense scene i will say the trailer did maybe give away a little bit more than i would have liked oh with yeah. this scene but you know i understand you got to get people in so um uh, yeah i mean I, I think the scene really worked for me the girl in this scene she was in uh you that's what i know her from she was in you season two her name is tara in okay. the movie i thought she was a standout as far as the new cast goes, I don't know how you felt about the new cast. I thought generally they were fine. She, I thought, was a bit of a standout because I, I think she just had a more dramatic role than most of the other actors. Yeah, none of the new people really. It was kind of like Scream 4 and 3 <laughs> a little bit. Actually, kind of all of them. The side characters, I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're fine. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm about the core three. I'm a core three kind of guy. But the intro, there's two things that I really liked and noticed. So the first thing was she survives. First time I think we've ever seen somebody in the beginning kill, quote unquote, actually make it, which <laughs> a little different for the Scream franchise. And the other thing was um, I loved the way Ghostface's voice sounded in this one. I just there was so much character in it, like especially when um, she was criticizing the lighting of Stab One or whatever. And she kind of his voice was just kind of like, <laughs> like, I don't know, just kind of laughing at her ignorance of being young, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, her surviving was a, a very cool kind of um, subversion of expectations. And I, I think th this movie has plenty of those. I mean, I think there's a lot of nice surprises. I really do want to see this movie again. I mean, there's so oh, yeah. many, like so many references, horror movie references and, and little homages and i think i feel like it's so dense with information I, I i wish i could have seen it again before this conversation you know and i was thinking this is like the the first time i think i've been on the show where i'm not talking about a movie that i've you know obsessed over for decades <laughs> you know that I've, I've seen i saw this movie you know 24 hours ago so this is a very different experience for me I know there's things that like I'm forgetting that I you know, have. Yeah, you're right. I haven't had time to really like process. I'm still dealing with Dewey's death, Joe. It's, yeah. it's hard. <laughs> no, no, I understand. I totally get it. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of um, I mean, we're, we're going to get into this because it's kind of a big deal. Yeah. There's all kinds of these familial relationships between the new characters and characters from the past. Mm. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of the movie. And they do reveal that in the trailer a little bit. Right, right. What I'm thinking of, though, is our main character's uh, bloodline. Mm, yeah, because Sydney does have kids now and she's married to a guy named Mark, I think. But <laughs> oh, that's not even what I'm uh, alluding to. Oh, what do you mean? But actually, yeah, the, the Mar Mark, I think, is a reference to uh, the Patrick Dempsey character. Is it him? Yeah, I'm pretty sure his name was Mark. Oh, wow. They ended up together, huh? Yeah. <laughs> there was no no mention of him in Scream 4, but I, right. guess, I guess they did uh, get back together. Huh. What were you talking about, though? I, I'm talking about the, the new girl, Sam. And, of course, we learn that her father is the original, the OG ghost face, Billy Loomis. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, so you think she might turn into a killer? Um. Well... You know, I do want to get into what we where we think this franchise is going. Mm. But what were your thoughts on what I thought was a pretty big surprise? You know, she has some kind of psychosis and she actually sees visions of Billy and he talks to her. And uh, it was quite a surprise. What did you make of that? Yeah, I mean, initially it reminded me of Scream 3, but that is a dream sequence where Sydney's seeing her mother. But, you know, but this is, yeah, this is kind of nuts. I, it was weird seeing Skeet Ulrich just kind of like old, but look, trying to look young again. That was a little like, okay, you know, 
But um, it definitely adds something, and I'm glad they did it. You know, it definitely needed a little more. I'm glad they didn't have, like, Stu also, like, Buddy Ghost coming in, too. You know? But, uh, yeah, I'm glad they did it. I'm glad they did it. Felt a little goofy, but I'm so glad they did it. What about yeah. you? You know, it felt goofy, but I'm not going to lie. I absolutely loved it. <laughs> I, I don't know why. You know, it's it's funny. Like, I think it was just really good to see Billy again. I mean, we we talked in the other episodes, you know, what makes this franchise special and it's and it's the characters you know it's not the killer that's always being resurrected like a lot of the other franchises it's yeah. you know sydney and and dewey and gail and their relationships but there was something about seeing the the og ghost face you know my favorite ghost face seeing him again was you know i just thought it was kind of fun and yeah. and when um <laughs> when at the end when he like seems proud of her for taking out the killer <laughs> i almost wanted to stand up and applaud it was like <laughs> it's so batshit i i just like really appreciated it yeah no dude like i liked it too it was good to see him and it was also it was new it was something new in the direction where it's like yeah the lineage part but then also her seeing her father yeah i mean it's just i don't know yeah it's, we've never kind of seen anything like that so yeah good on them for doing something new Absolutely. And, you know, it kind of reminded me of something that we didn't get into in Scream 4. You know, I told you that the hospital ending was something that was kind of tacked on. It wasn't something that Kevin Williamson wrote. Mm. Originally, Scream 4 was going to end with Jill kind of being wheeled out from the crime scene, thinking that she won, you know, getting all this attention from the press and uh, you know, Scream 4 would end on a cliffhanger. You wouldn't know if Sydney is alive or dead. Oh. And um, in Kevin Williamson Scream 5 would pick up with Jill. And I don't know how it would continue exactly. I don't know if like Sydney would be in a coma and Jill has to figure out how to get to her or something. But I'm assuming maybe Jill would be the main character and, and it would be an interesting new direction, almost like American Psycho, where you the main character is you know, this psychopath. I don't know. It, it seemed like Williamson's ideas were uh, much different than what ended up happening. What ended up happening is I think Bob Weinstein wanted a, a finale more like the first three movies, you know? Yeah. That would have really taken the series in a new direction where it's like yeah. an anti-hero kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, going forward, and I do believe this franchise is going to go forward because I just <laughs> saw some of the box office numbers, oh, and this this movie's already outgrossed Scream Four. So Dude. you can you can be sure there's going to be more, and it's going to be interesting if they bring the Sam character back and how her psychosis is going to manifest. I don't know. I I really liked this little touch, but I've seen in a little bit online that it's kind of a, a divisive bit. Hmm. I mean. It, yeah, I, I don't know. I liked it. I really liked the direction that, that they took. And I guess the thing I want to know what you took away from it, and, and you know, it's hard to, to really know until we've seen it a few more times, but the overall theme of the movie to me was more about like modern fandom and like the fans kind of dictating what the, the franchise will be a little bit. Because we've seen that with like Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't know. Do you know about the controversy with that movie? Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I feel like that's kind of perfect uh, mm -hmm. for, for Scream, as far as Scream motives go. I mean, uh, you know, we've talked about in the other movies how a lot of the time they feel very timely. And I think this is no different. I mean, don't get me wrong. We all are, are passionate about movies. Obviously, we all have our opinions. But there are like certain corners of the internet where this stuff has like essentially been turned into politics <laughs> you know it's it's just like gross and and even for someone like me who obviously i love movies and and they're my passion i am not part of real really any internet discourse because it's just it's really gross yeah what's the point i mean like you either like it or you don't you don't have to convince other people or i don't know i mean i love doing the podcast because it's just mm -hmm. us like talking about what we thought and all I care about is honesty, you know, like, yeah. and it feels like you're right. It's like tribal and people like have to just take a side. It's so weird. It's so funny. They're movies. They're fun. Mm -hmm. Like, what are we doing yeah. here? Yeah, absolutely. And, and the movie has a lot of fun <laughs> sticking it to some of these, um, 
some of these fan bases. Yeah. And I do like them kind of almost basically defining what a requel is. And I guess like examples of that would be like Star Wars. Those aren't really, I guess they are sequels, but they're, you know, no, I guess what, what is a requel then? I guess the Halloween is an example of a requel. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, we talked about, you know, in one of our previous episodes where it seemed like we went through that trend of the remakes, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Nightmare on Elm Street, and all these movies that wiped everything clean and started fresh. Yeah. And then it seems like the requel to me is, yes, Star Wars, which is like you bring back the old characters, but you're essentially telling the same story, you know, Jurassic World. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good example. And yeah, I mean, ev even this new movie is kind of doing that. But still, uh, you know, trying to subvert expectations along the way. Yeah, and it's cool that they're, like, acknowledging that. And one trope that I'm, I'm really noticing a lot in these kind of movies is Dewey. The way that his character is was kind of, you know, this, this interesting story arc. He becomes this weird little nervous cop. And then by the fourth one, he's the sheriff. He's badass. And then we see him now, and he's, like, an alcoholic living in a trailer. And... We're seeing that a lot more now where it's like a character was so awesome in their prime. And then for some reason in the gap in between the one that we all like and, and the newer ones, this character's fallen from grace. I mean, you see it with Ash vs. Evil Dead. You see it with Cobra Kai. You see it with Star mm -hmm. Wars, even with Luke and then this. So it's I'm just wondering why for some reason screenwriters are like, hey, you know, that character that was like badass and awesome you loved. Well, now he's an alcoholic who lives in a trailer. And it's just like, why Why is that kind of like the trend I'm noticing? Yeah, I think it's just to start him at the bottom, you know, to start him at the bottom. And then you you have some place for him to go. Hmm. That, I mean, that would be my guess. But yeah, that is that is an interesting trend. Yeah, I'm wondering if like in this new Indiana Jones 5, he's just like going to be washed up, you know, like sitting in a gutter somewhere, scratching lotto tickets and having a big beard. And it's like, Indy, we need you back. Like, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think of Gail and Sydney's characters like now in comparison to to the uh, previous ones? Uh, you know, I was actually a little surprised. I felt like they weren't in it as much as I right? thought they would be. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. I mean, I I thought they did good work, you know, I I liked their scenes together, especially Dewey and Gale, that one scene they shared was really nice. Mm. Um but, you know, I've been seeing them all over like the press tours, you know, and I, it just seemed like they were the, the leads in the the show again, but it, it really does seem like the torch has been passed. Yeah. So um yeah, I mean, I I liked I liked what they did, but uh I was just surprised there wasn't more of it. Yeah, no, exactly. Dude, me too. I, I like noticed it was like 40 minutes in, I think, until we actually see them like really all even together or in Woodsboro at all. So I was a little little shocked about that. And then when when Dewey got killed, man, the one thing that I just kind of curious about, they, they didn't say that the, the person who was ghost at that time was wearing a bulletproof vest. Oh, you could see it. Yeah, when I think they do show briefly during Dewey's death scene you can see uh you can see the killer who i believe is a she not a he in that scene we can talk about that okay <laughs> um, okay yeah i'm pretty sure you can you can see the bulletproof vest but should we should we talk a little bit about like the reveal of the killers were you were you suspicious of anyone did it go down like you thought it would dude i had no idea like i was literally sitting there i was just like they everybody's pointing fingers at everybody i genuinely had no idea so i was pretty surprised when i found out who it was but what about you yeah i had no idea and i thought you know the the moments where they reveal themselves was was really cool and it was really shocking like i think it would have been less effective if we got that moment where you know like in part two and part actually three and four the moment where the killer just takes the mask off i think if we got moments like that it would have been like oh okay you know uh, it, it was that girl but instead, like the way she reveals herself is by shooting her friend right in the head. And it's like, oh, shit. Yeah, you know? I know. That was very surprising. We, yeah, you're right. We've never really seen that either, where it, it always is like the masks come off and someone's yeah. on the ground. Like, yeah. Well, except I was thinking that except in part one, because uh, in part one, mm -hmm. when Billy reveals himself, he shoots Randy. And it's like that holy shit moment. And then when um, Sam's boyfriend, who is the second killer, you know, I think he stabs her 
And then it's like, oh, shit. Yeah, dude. So, yeah, I thought those were really effective moments. And it should be said, the girl, I think her name is Amber, the female killer. Mm -hmm. She was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. (laughs) Yep, yep. And playing a a very similar character. Mm Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, I, I went to see this movie with my wife, and we're both huge fans of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And when she gets lit on fire, <laughs> yeah. just just like, you know, in Once Upon a Time, we were, like, elbowing each other. Yeah. And like, I mean, we just we just got such a kick out of that. Dude, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, is this girl just, like, the new, like, burnt thing? <laughs> just, yeah. like, dies by getting lit on fire, girl? <laughs> yeah, that's, like, her thing. And you know what? Yeah. She She did a great job. I know, I know. I I liked it too, man. I was like, (laughs) hey, good for her. So the boyfriend being the killer. All right. I love that. I think that's a really cool twist. But dude, that there's so much riding on that relationship. Like, what if Sam is just kind of like, listen, like, I just, I'm not interested. Like, we're friends, (laughs) like, sort of thing. Like, he has to, like, I'm assuming they worked at this bowling alley. He slowly got to know that, oh my God, this is her. And he was already interested in, I don't know message boards about movie film <laughs> horror films met this other girl who's friends with her sister it's just it is very convenient but i just want to know like dude what do you think about the relationship do you really it just seems so much is riding on something that like easily could have just been like let's just be friends right right no yeah i think you're right and like i said i want to see this movie again because mm. like like all scream killers there is so much of an information dump like i don't know what it is about the scream killers but they just love to monologue at the end of these movies <laughs> and there's just so much information you know i i Kind of just want to see it again. But yeah, you're right. A lot of circumstance had to happen just right for all this to work out. Yeah. I do like what they were saying, though, you know, where it's like we're dictating where the series should go. We hated the last one. And um, somebody I talked to actually mentioned this. And I don't know if I heard it correctly, but I think they were mocking Stab 8. Right. That was the one that like really drove them to do this. Yeah. And they said it was directed by the same guy that did Knives Out. Right. Yes. Yes, okay. I caught this. Yep, I caught All it. All right. So Ryan Johnson, Star Wars. Right, right. So yeah, they're they're poking a little fun at that whole situation. Yeah. I might have already said this, but it almost seems like a no-brainer. It almost seems so obvious, like that that is the direction, you know, a 2022 scream movie should go in. It it just makes perfect sense. It's like so brilliant, and I I never would have thought of it. So after seeing it, what do you think about the title? And they talk about it a little bit in the movie, too. Yeah, that's funny. I feel the same way I felt before seeing it. I mean, (laughs) I would be perfectly fine just calling this movie Scream 5 just for simplicity's sake, you know, just just to avoid confusion. But it is what it is. I I mean, it's it's a marketing thing. But like it almost like doesn't make sense, though, because imagine you're like. 15 or not 15 17 or whatever and you're going to see you've never seen any of the other scream movies and they're like here it is scream you're like all right so i go to see it so much of the the substance of knowing about the past movies is going to be lost Mm -hmm. but if you call it scream five it might motivate those people to go out and do what what you and i did go rewatch all the other ones right before the new one as opposed to having them go see this one hoping that this stimulates them to want to go back and watch the other ones to enrich the story that they already saw as opposed to already having it like makes sense you know what i mean i mean i'm not gonna argue with any of that yeah (laughs) absolutely but i think just their thoughts are we just need them to buy a ticket and what is you know the the easiest way to do that you know we don't want them worrying about having to see anything just buy a ticket you know (sighs) i think that's that's as much thought as gets put into these things it just it just doesn't make sense to me i don't know i guess it I guess, but I think you're right. Like young generation just doesn't want to do homework or, you know, it, that might be, you know, the studio executives perception of young people, you know, maybe, maybe that's not true. Maybe, you know, a lot of them would see those movies or did see the, the old movies. But I I do think the perception of the audience is that this is a, a fresh take and you don't need to know anything. Just sit down and relax. Yeah, I know. I just feel like it's it's doing a disservice to the the young generation and the and the film, but it it's working. You're right. I mean, the budget was 24 million. It's Sunday right now and it's already made 30 million back in 2 days. Yeah. During the pandemic. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. damn. <laughs> it's it's really impressive, you know. I, and 
on our last podcast, I was, th- uh, you know, I was asking you, you know, had the Scream brand really grown since 2011 when Scream 4 underperformed? I mean, obviously, I don't know if it was the marketing or just nostalgia. Something has definitely changed in the last 11 years. Dude, I mean, I think it's what we talked about in the last episode. It was like Halloween having that resurgence, really kicking off an interest in horror again. And then also I did a little bit more research. Yeah, dude, Scream was on MTV for three seasons. So from 2015 to 2018, there must have been enough people, enough young people that were interested mm-hmm. in at least the the idea of what this this franchise is. We should probably talk about where we think this franchise is headed, but I actually have one question for you um yeah. what did you think of like the meta movie chit chat you know the the banter the the rules all that stuff that you know seems like it's a scream staple we talked about this in the other episodes what did you have any overall feelings about that uh i don't remember it as well as the other ones but it's it was basically like randy's niece and nephew the twins are kind of talking about the rules of a requel right it's like a young diverse cast and yeah. lineage characters that one yeah there's that whole scene and again that that's another scene i wish i could go back and watch because there's so much information and and movie titles being dropped and who's related to who and also there's the whole scene in the beginning the opening scene where she's telling the killer how she prefers movies like the baba duke mm-hmm. over slasher movies right i i loved that they threw out so many like modern horror films which i i love like i'm mm-hmm. i'm such an equal opportunity horror person like i love 80 slashers and i also love baba duke and hereditary <laughs> and all that stuff so yeah i like that they were mentioning that i don't know why <laughs> what, what were your thoughts <laughs> no i mean i thought it was all really well written and 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 very witty and again like i want to go back and really listen to what they were all saying because i i I think it was it all sounded really good but there's something about these scenes that just kind of hmm. take me out of the movie and all of a sudden I'm not in the movie I feel like I'm listening to the writer tell me his take on horror movies does that make sense yeah oh no 100 percent. yeah i mean we especially in scream 4 and mm-hmm. you know when they're just literally just talking about horror tropes on yeah. a couch you know yeah i i felt like scream 1 did that so brilliantly like it did it in a way that felt very natural like you could imagine you and your friends talking about movies in that way Mm -hmm. and in most of the sequels i just as you know witty and sharp and and well written as they are there's just something about it that all of a sudden i'm not in the movie i'm watching a movie it, it's it's like Scream almost, it became a trope of Scream to talk mm-hmm. about horror, or to talk about film tropes almost, if that makes sense. So it's yeah. like, they, you come to expect it in a Scream movie that they're going to do this. So they probably, in the first time they were doing it, they're like, oh, this will be a fun scene. And they just kind of worked it in. Now they're like, we have to do this in every movie now. And, and you know what? If it was missing, I might miss it. Like if right. they didn't do these scenes, I'd probably miss it. But yeah, that was just something I noticed while watching it. But getting back to something I really liked was was the whole kind of psycho tribute with the uh, the character named Wes mm. and uh, and his mother, Deputy Judy. Yeah. Uh, when they both get it, I thought that was a really impressive kind of extended sequence. Oh, my God. Yeah. Very, yeah, you're right. And it was kind of like a Hitchcock thing where it's kind of like they keep showing him in the shower. They keep showing her driving like, you know, the tension keeps rising and who's going to get there first. And yeah, completely unexpected when she gets to the door and then Ghostface just pops out and stabs her in broad daylight. Like, I don't give a mm-hmm. fuck. Like, I'll kill you right here. The sheriff of the town <laughs> right in her front yard. Like, damn. Yeah, definitely bold. And, and you know, like, again, subverting expectations because, you know, I, I was definitely thinking psycho when he got into the shower. Even mm-hmm. his bleached blonde hair made me think of Janet Lee. Oh, but, yeah. uh, you know, he he makes it out of the shower and you're like, oh, OK, so wasn't expecting that. Maybe he's going to survive this. They play a lot of fun games with the audience during that whole scene. Yeah. And the little lemon squares uh, reference on the refrigerator. Did you get that? No. Oh yeah, it's just like lemon squares oh, are in the fridge, and that's from Scream is. Four. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I feel like this movie is definitely going to reward with uh, future future rewatches. Yep. No, hundred percent. But yeah, and and they even acknowledge that where they're just like about Jeffy Duty. It's like nobody cares about your like sequel 
lineage or whatever like kind of mocking that oh you're deputy judy's son or whatever like who cares like that kind of you're a side character's kid like nobody cares about that i like that another thing i just want to mention too that i loved was revisiting Stu's old house and kind of getting that that whole revisited ending from scream one Mm -hmm. yeah that was cool to see again you know absolutely yeah i really enjoyed that I, I, they did. They did play uh, the Nick Cave song in the car. Yep. yep. I, I I smiled when I heard it, and I really <laughs> liked. I really liked the way they used it too. Yeah, it was cool. But but that's the other thing I want to know. In that scene, who was that guy that got killed? Yeah. Well, the, they dropped some line about what did, did he hook up with one of the girls? I mean, I really feel like that was just uh, too. Add another body, you know. I feel like I feel like this movie is paced really well. Like I never was bored at all during this mm. movie, and I feel like maybe uh, they felt there was just a little lull, and they threw in another kill. At least that's what it felt like to me. Yeah, I was like, who who is that guy related to? Oh, well, he actually they do drop a line. Um, I think he's related to Stu. Really? Yeah, there is a line dropped about that, and honestly, you know. I was I was literally asking my wife to to clarify some of these things because I I felt like between all the who's related to who and this is referencing this I actually had to ask her about that and I'm pretty sure there's a line dropped about him related to Stu in some way. Hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. And no, I yeah. And that's another thing. I just I gotta see it again. You know, just to mm-hmm. just to catch every little detail. Yeah. Another thing I want to ask you too. Let's say, because I mean, you're right. I mean, they probably are going to make a sequel now. The money's there. The clearly, the interest is there. If they do make a sequel, and let's say it's starring Sam, the two sisters, the twins that survived, everybody that survived, if Sydney and Gail don't come back, mm-hmm. what's, what's your interest without them? You know, I was thinking of that with this movie. I mean, where would your interest level have been had none of the legacy characters come back? Not there, really. I mean, Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson missing and then not having them two. Then I'm like, it's not really screamed. Yeah. I mean, I might have just said to myself, this probably isn't for me. And maybe I'll just see it when I see it. You know, in Mm -hmm. all honesty, I so I think with enjoying this movie as much as I did, I think I'll I would give the sixth movie a shot regardless but yeah, no doubt it would take something away. But then again, I do feel like at some point you have to cut the cord and pass the torch to the next generation. Because I mean, like we kind of joked about, you know, Sydney has now encountered nine <laughs> serial killers in her life. I mean, yeah, look, this series is most definitely going to continue. Honestly, if I was a suit at... I guess Paramount Pictures. It was kind of weird not seeing the Dimension Films logo in front of mm-hmm. this movie, but yeah. Scream, Scream is with Paramount now. If I was, if I was, you know, a, an executive at Paramount, I would say, okay, Halloween Ends comes out this year, and I would imagine they're going to take a, a few years off from the Halloween movies after that. Mm-hmm. I would be, I would be penciling in a, a Scream Six next October. That's what I would be doing. Wow, that fast. Oh yeah, I, I guarantee you these discussions are happening. Getting back to your question, I really enjoyed the movie. Hopefully they bring back, you know, the the writers and the director. I'll be down for another one, but yeah, it will definitely lose some something not having those that core group anymore. Now I feel the same way. It's it's like you know, they kind of learned their lesson with Halloween three you, mm-hmm. without Michael Myers. It didn't feel like Halloween, like season of the witch would be a fine standalone movie. But you call it Halloween three without that character. It's kind of like uh, Scream six without them. Ghostface isn't really as impactful without Sydney, you know, mm-hmm. so it's kind of like I don't really care as much if she's not if she's not involved. Yeah. But I wonder if younger audiences feel that way you know do they feel as connected to the older cast as we do you know do they even care i mean the audience reaction when i saw this movie was it was a lot of fun you know there's been a lot of talk about seeing movies you know at home and seeing movies in a theater that i saw this with a very not obnoxious but a, a a crowd that was very obviously into it okay and and i just wonder if they even care about those characters. They just want to see a fun roller coaster ride. I mean, mm. so I don't know. Maybe we're 
making too big a deal out of it. I don't know. I could be wrong. No, it's definitely an interesting way to look at it because, you know, to us, especially to you, you know, seeing it mm -hmm. in, in theaters as a as a younger person, not a kid. But <laughs> that's the point of it to me. I don't know. I mean, there's so much, obviously, with, with what they're saying about the uh, film and horror industry with each iteration. But the characters are what matter. The Laurie Strode is what matters. And, and if you're not going to do a straight slasher, if you're going to do like a meta self-referential series... And I don't know. You, you need Sydney. That's just me. That's yeah. just me. That's just me. Yeah. If you want to see some mindless slasher, go watch Friday the 13th then. You know, like mm -hmm. that's fine. But the characters are why matter. You know who might be coming back is Billy. I mean, I would imagine <laughs> that if they do bring the Sam character back, which I, I think they should, that she will continue having these uh, oh my God. these visions of Billy. And you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> just Dexter literally just becomes Dexter. Where it's just like the visions is like you can't kill here and like all this stuff. We'll see. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You have any other last thoughts before we give our our order, I guess? I mean, are we gonna are we gonna do this when Scream Six comes out? Oh, I dude, I'm down. I mean, yeah. only if you want to do this. I, I feel bad. I mean, if you want to watch it a few more times, like I totally get it. Oh, no. I mean, when Scream 6 comes out, we need to get back together and review it. Oh, 100%. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Dude, you're you're the Scream guy, Joe. There's no one else. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm marking it down in the calendar right now. I'm, I'm going to make a prediction. I say 2023, we're getting a Scream movie. That would be insane. That would be like, yeah, Scream 1, 2, back to back. Boom. So what are they mm -hmm. going to call it? What the, what the hell are they going to call this one? Scream Oh, God. Let's not even go there. <laughs> screams. Yeah, screams. Oh, God. Yeah. This is what they, they're digging themselves into a hole, Joe. What are they going to do? <laughs> Alec, don't be a toxic fan. You I, know. Know. I mean, <laughs> I know. I know. This is what happens. This is it. You're going to be donning the mask soon. I could feel it. <laughs> well, I guess some um, scary movie kind of made a joke about this, too, where they canceled Martin or whatever. It's just like it's like shows don't make people killers. Like canceling shows without even giving them finale makes people killers. <laughs> oh, man, I, I, I'll have to revisit those movies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, dude, I love those. But anyways. Um, all right, Joe. Well, what do you think? What do you think? Oh, you're making me do it. All right. Well, look, it's it's I don't have a lot of hot takes. Scream one is now and forever will be the greatest. Yeah. And I'm going with Scream two. You know that I still have a lot of fondness for that movie. And and look, so much of our love for these movies, I, I feel like it's about how we saw them. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's I, I remember seeing that first movie with my grandfather and and seeing part two with my friends. And like I have so many great memories attached. It's really hard to see a movie 24 hours ago and for it to right. compete with that. You know, yeah. that being said, <laughs> that being said, you know what? I'm going to go with Scream 5 in, in third place. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And and I have a lot of fondness for Scream 4 too. You can go back and listen to that episode. I think uh I think it's actually kind of underrated and I still think that reveal of Jill in Scream 4 is killer. You know, I I think that was a a brilliant twist. So yeah, 1 2 5 4 and 3. Oh, could, before we get to your <laughs> rankings, yeah. could I just say something really quick about Scream 3? Please. I feel like it has all but been written out of continuity <laughs> because there's the scene where uh, Gail and Sydney are talking and Gail's like, you know, this is all my fault if I just didn't write this book. And then Sydney's like, you know, it's not your fault. It was Billy and Stu. And there's no mention of Roman. Right. I mean, according to Scream 3, Roman was like the puppet master. He's the one who told Billy about the scandal and, and you know, essentially put the knife in his hand. It made it sound like. Yeah, I, I feel like they just don't want you to think about that one. I, I mean, and if you think about it, though, if this happened in real life, Scream 3, the events of Scream 3 would probably be the most scandalous of all or, or the, the the most high profile mm -hmm. i mean you had like movie stars getting killed uh, uh producers getting killed mansions in the hollywood hills getting blown yeah. up yeah i mean yeah so i think you know they realize at this point 
if you really think about it too much, all of this is a little ridiculous. So I, I think the point is they don't want you to think about it that much. But yeah, that's just, just something I noticed. Well, you know, to be honest, with you, they don't really mention two or three or four in any of this. They really kind of only stick to mentioning things that happen in one for the most part. I mean, with the exception of Stewie and I mean, Dewey and uh, and Gail, like talking about, you know, them, their divorce and stuff like that from Scream 4. That's that's really about it. That all I can think of. Yeah, I mean, Deputy Judy is a character mm. from Scream 4. There's that. That's true. But but you're right. Like when Sam is talking about how she's the daughter of a serial killer, she's also the granddaughter of a serial killer because Mrs. Loomis was a serial killer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No mention of that. Huh. So, Weird. At least not that I call. I, again, I, I want to see this movie again. And you'd think that maybe Sam's mom, who's like, what, just like off in London, like, I don't really care. My kid got stabbed. She would eventually maybe be like, listen, Mrs. Loomis, like you're this is your this is your daughter, your granddaughter. Like that never happened. Yeah, I I have no idea. Maybe there's going to be like a, a prequel novel. <laughs> yeah, because like imagine that like you're in high school and, and you get pregnant and then you have the kid and you're like, I, I need help. Like you're not going to go to the the guy's mo family, you know, <laughs> or I don't know. But who knows? Who knows? Well, she told her current boyfriend that it was his. Oh, that's right. Yeah, if if I'm remembering that correctly. That's right. And then he took off when when uh, she revealed that, when Sam revealed that. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I got to watch it again to be like, I, 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 oh, okay. They plugged that hole. Okay. All right. Good for them. <laughs> All right. Your, your rankings. Dude, it's the same as yours. I mean, like, yeah, one is 100% the best. Two is a really nice way to follow it up. Give that nice little talking about sequels and all that. I liked five a lot, man. I really enjoyed it. Maybe, maybe I'm kind of high on just watching it recently, but yeah. I, I enjoyed the hell out of it Four, same thing. I feel the same way as you. Like I really enjoyed that. That was the first one I ever saw in theaters. So I really enjoyed being able to experience that. This one, the fifth one, same thing. Right when I heard the phone ringing in the beginning, I got giddy, you know, like I was just like, Ooh, we're here. We're here. I don't know what's going to happen. And three's not a bad movie. If three's the worst, then that's not a big deal. Like it's not a bad movie. So same thing, man. I'm excited for this franchise. I do feel like it needs Sydney and Gale, at least for my interest to be, you know, there. But considering we didn't have Wes Craven or Kevin Williamson for this one, they did a good job. So I, mm -hmm. I recommend if you like the franchise, check it out. Absolutely. Joe, we did it, dude. All five Scream movies. We covered them all. How do you feel? Oh, this was so much fun. Yeah, I mean, it, this franchise is obviously very special to me. And it, it was great talking to you about it. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to yeah. talk about it. Because like I said, you know, I, I um, don't uh, partake in the uh, internet discourse when it comes to movies for reasons this movie uh, <laughs> kind of explores. So, uh, you know, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Oh, dude. Anytime, Joe, any movie that you're like, hey, can I talk about this? It's like, all right, let's drop everything. Like, because I mean, you're so knowledgeable, you're so passionate, you know, you, it's just it's it's always an honor to have you on, man. So thank you again you know, for taking this journey with everybody and, and covering all five movies in the past uh, you know, week. So absolutely. And like I said, we're not done yet. No, no, there will be another one. You're right. You're right. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for listening into our discussion on Scream 5 today. Um, if you haven't had a chance, go back and listen to the other ones that came out last week. We also had Dawn of the Dead, the remake that came out yesterday. We also will have Book of Boba Fett on Wednesday tomorrow. And then on Friday, Fresh Films Fridays with uh, something. I don't know. Anyways, have a great day, guys. Thanks again for listening in.